Good afternoon and welcome to UCEA Google Plus Hangouts on Air. This is Angel Nash and I'm a graduate research assistant and doctoral student at UCEA headquarters at the University of Virginia. I'm here today to interview Dr. April L. Peters as part of her candidacy for re-election to the UCEA Executive Committee and election for the UCEA presidency. Today, listeners will be hearing from Dr. April L. Peters, who is an associate professor of educational administration at the University of Georgia. She is a former teacher, dean of students, and high school principal. Her research interests include mentoring and support for early career administrators, issues of intersectionality and in school leadership, and leadership and small school reform. Dr. Peters' research has appeared in the Journal of School Leadership, Teachers College Record, Leadership and Policy in Schools, Journal of Educational Administration, the Journal of Research on Leadership and Education, the International Journal of Qualitative Studies and Education, and the Journal of Research for Students Placed at Risk. Dr. Peters was the recipient of the 2010 Outstanding Teaching Award in the College of Education at the University of Georgia. In addition to being recognized for her teaching at her home institution, April was an invited adjunct instructor at the University of Texas Austin, UTCULP, Urban Principal Preparation Program in the summers of 2011 and 2012. April has been active in revising both the educational specialist and the educational doctoral degree at her home institution. Both degrees are performance-based and designed to support and prepare practitioners. She is extremely passionate about this work and looks forward to contributing to continued improvements. Welcome, Dr. Peters. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Angel. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Let's begin with the first question. Please tell us about your background and your scholarship as it relates to leadership preparation and practice. Certainly. So I'll start uh, with something that you mentioned briefly earlier. I was a teacher. I was a Teach for America teacher, actually, which is how I started my career in education. And I taught sixth grade in New Jersey. And then um, from there, I um, became a founding member of a charter school and was the dean of students there. And in that role, had an opportunity to both serve as, a, as an administrator as well as a teacher. And then um, I moved on and, and got my PhD, but then after that, uh, returned to the world of practice and uh, ended up in a large urban setting and started a small school, uh, small high school and served as the high school principal there for several years. Uh, that district was undergoing small school reform and was reconstituting large underperforming high schools. And so, uh, was placing uh, principals there to lead those schools under reform. And so I did that for several years, and then I ended up here at the University of Georgia in my ninth year, um, serving as a uh, associate professor of educational administration. And uh, in that role, have really been thinking significantly about um, leadership preparation from the perspective of support and uh, mentoring for early career principals, as well as thinking about um, how we uh, prepare school leaders, particularly as they undertake school reforms. So that's kind of how I got here and how it, it connects to practice as well as uh, preparation. Thank you. You have served for several years as a member of the executive committee. Tell us about your engagement in UCA's governance. Sure. So I actually served as a plenum rep before I got to the executive committee, and I did that for several terms representing the University of Georgia. And in that role, I, I learned a lot about uh, governance for um, UCEA. I had a great plenum partner who uh, showed me the ropes, so to speak, about how the plenum works, and that was really helpful for me to try to understand what my role was within the organization. And then I uh, served for the last three years as um, a member of the executive committee. And again, that experience has really allowed me to um, see and be a part of the governance of UCEA at a much more granular level. Um, and I've enjoyed this experience um, because of the opportunity that I've had to be a part of the visioning and planning for the larger organization. Thank you. And what other ways have you been engaged in UCEA? Yes. Yeah, so. In addition to serving as a plenum representative and as a member of the executive committee, I also have served as uh, and currently serve as the co-editor of the features section of the UCEA review. 
And I've also uh, served on the task force for distance learning. Um, and then in addition to that, um, I serve currently as a Barbara Jackson Scholar Mentor. I serve on the editorial boards for EAQ and JRLE. And one of the more interesting things that I've done of all of those things, which I think are really um, fascinating, I also was in, uh, able to be a part of a site visit for, an for a university seeking UCEA membership. And um, that also, I think, really helped me to understand a lot about the organization as a whole, but also about what membership entails and what we're looking for when universities say that they want to align with UCEA and to seek membership. Thank you. Will you discuss with us your scholarship, research projects, teaching, and or service that can inform the work of UCEA? Certainly. So in terms of scholarship, um, currently I'm working on several things um, that I think are very much connected and aligned with the work of UCEA. So one, one project that I'm working on right now, and, and some of these are in, in um, various stages of um, completion, but uh, working with some colleagues on the Action Research EDD, which is also connected to my teaching because at the University of Georgia in the um, Educational Administration and Policy Program, we have begun to think about, to rethink our uh, EDD specifically. Um, it is required to be a performance-based degree, and so students have to have some in-service practice uh, uh, with respect to leadership. But in addition, they complete an action research uh, dissertation. And so we are looking at some of the, the outcomes already that we have experienced with our students uh, and collaborating on some research that will hopefully inform the field with respect to the practitioner-oriented EDD. Um, I'm also working, uh, and this is in some somewhat of an embryonic stage, and looking at women of color and educational leadership both from the perspective of students who are pursuing these degrees, but also eventually looking at the experiences of faculty and women who are in leadership, not just in faculty roles in, in the field of educational leadership and what their experiences are. And then I've also been working on uh, a project collaboratively that looks at leadership succession planning because um, it's really important to me to think about not only you know, how we lead and the impact of leadership in an organization, but also how we prepare others to step into those roles. And so that's some of the scholarship that I'm working on that I think um, is, is very much aligned with the work of UCEA. Uh, in addition, um, I think my teaching is aligned as well. So there are a couple of things that I've been doing with respect to teaching that I think are very much connected to, um, to the work of UCEA. Uh, one of those things, several of those things have to do with just creating courses. So in, in my role as a faculty member, I've looked around and, and thought about the way in which our coursework, um, where there may be some gaps in our coursework that our students might need. And so, um, for instance, um, we have a course on building level leadership, but I thought that that course needed some significant revisions to be much, much more relevant for our educational specialists and doctoral students. And so I did some significant revisions of that course. And then I also created several courses, one on leadership for learning. Um, and again, our, our specialists and our doctoral students take the, this course. And the focus of that course really thinks about how the leader in a school actually is also responsible um, for the learning that takes place in the school and how, how they can support that, that function. And then um, one of the things that I'm, particularly proud of is that as I looked around at the coursework offerings of other universities that offer an ed leadership uh, doctorate and, and or specialist degree, and I looked at ours, I realized that we do not have, or at that time we did not have, any course that focused on diversity, social justice, cultural competency, et cetera. And so uh, in talking with my colleagues, I decided to undertake the development of such a course. And so I teach a course on leadership in diverse contexts that I think is really important for helping our students to, um, to be more aware and also to be more culturally competent in the work that they do in their schools as practitioners. I also created a core course for doctoral level students um, in educational administration so that they could have some theoretical background about the work um, and, and sort of the theories that impact the work in educational administration.
and has been mentioned earlier, but we recently did some significant revision of our EDS and our EDD degrees, um, specifically because we have a requirement in the state of Georgia that those degrees are performance-based. And so that means that students will, in addition to the coursework that they take, will also engage in residency so that they can get some practical hands-on experience uh, in ways that allow them to undertake some leadership um, endeavors to, to, to support them in the work that they do and that they will do as building level and district level leaders. And so um, we've really looked at aligning the courses that students have to take in order um, to, uh, to complete those degrees successfully, as well as looking at the significance of the performance-based experience. And thirdly, looking at how we can incorporate the perform performance-based experience, not only in a residency, which is sort of a separate course, but also how we might incorporate that performance-based experience in the coursework that students are taking concurrent to taking the residency so that, that those experiences are much more seamless than just a course that's separate from everything else. And so I've been very active in that work in, um, in my program area to make sure that we provide those kinds of opportunities for our students. With respect to service, and I think, again, many of these things are um, very much aligned. And so um, I would say that with respect to service, there are some ways in which I, my service evidences leadership. Um, and then there are some ways in which my service um, activities evidence um, more alignment with my teaching and scholarship. And so um, with respect to the leadership end of my service, things like um, last year, I served as the president of the faculty senate. And I think what that does is just demonstrate that um, I have a passion for leadership and that there are people who put their, their faith and trust in me as a leader um, to get things done. And so I had a successful year as the president of the faculty senate in the College of Education at the University of Georgia. I also have served as um, AERA Division A Division, uh, Dissertation Award Committee member. And I also have served as, <laughs> as AERA Division A Section 5 program, uh, Section Chair, sec uh, Division A Co-Chair. And this year I'm, I'm chairing Division A. So, uh, and Division A is the leadership division for AERA. And so while it's separate from UCEA, there are some overlaps in the work that we do there. And so, and I think that my activities evidence my ability to lead in, in those ways. Um, with respect to service um, connected to my teaching and scholarship, um, at the University of Georgia, we, we are engaged in a partnership program between the College of Ed and the umbrella organization for the Georgia Professional uh, Leader Organizations. And in that partnership, we have created a, an opportunity for um, early career principals, and it's known as the Early Career Principal Residency Program. And that, uh, that program actually provides a two-year, I want to call it an induction, but it's really like a residency, and that's why we call it that, um, for early career principals who are in their first three years of the principalship. This is very much connected to my scholarship on early career principals and my, my passion and research uh, on early career principles. So I've been involved with making sure that our, our programmatic offerings are aligned with leadership standards um, with respect to what we offer on a, uh, the, the um, participants meet every other month. And so when we meet with them, we are making, we make sure that what they receive in terms of content is aligned with leadership standards. But I've also been in, involved with actually offering some of the sessions that they are that they participate in. And so I've been pretty pretty significantly involved with that program since the beginning, since its inception. And we are now on cohort five, I believe, of that program. In addition, I have served as a consultant to uh, Atlanta Public Schools, who at one time was also involved in the small school reform program where they were reconstituting some of their underperforming high schools. And so I served in a role that supported principals and leadership teams in those schools as they implemented the reform for their particular schools. That was very rewarding work because I had an opportunity to see uh, leadership um, in practice in a different way than I experienced it as a principal leading a small school, um, but also from the lens of uh, 
you know, an academician who was who had had the experience, but who was also looking to research it. And so that was exciting work. And currently, I'm I'm working as a part of a research team that is uh, working alongside a Metro Atlanta school district that recently received Wallace funding to develop some competencies and standards um, for principal supervisors. And we will also be developing some modules for training for that. So I've got a lot of experience with respect to thinking about school leadership, district leadership, um, how we support and mentor those folks. And then I also have some experience in terms of the other side of the coin of leading in those capacities as well. Thank you. Of all the things you have been involved with since joining the executive committee, what would you consider the most significant? I love this question because there are so many things that I consider important about the work of the executive committee. And so the executive committee has afforded me um, several opportunities um, from opportunities like site visits to actually go and see other institutions who are interested in UCEA membership to working with the leadership of UCEA um, to think through the visioning for and the planning for the plenary sessions, et cetera. And so I think all of those experiences have been um, very powerful and, and made an impression on me. However, I think from a personal professional standpoint, probably one some of the most significant experiences have been very much directly related to our commitment to social justice and the way in which we push each other and ourselves and hold ourselves accountable to this to upholding this part of the vision. And so, um, as part of the UC, as part of the EC, we um, we really undertake this in some very um, significant ways, often with discussions that follow um, some intense readings and then ways in which we sort of are reflective about what we do as an executive committee and how we model those things that we say are part of our vision. But that has also led me back to thinking about myself as, uh, as an instructor, as a teacher, as a scholar, and how uh, I'm, I'm embodying the very things that I say that I, uh, that I embrace. And so to see that alignment between the things that I consider important professionally in my own uh, scholarship and work uh, to see them also aligned with um, what the EC also says is, is very important has been very significant for me as a member of the executive committee. Thank you. If reelected for the executive committee, what would you hope to accomplish during your second term? Uh, I think that the uh, executive committee works really hard uh, behind the scenes and between the meetings to to get a lot accomplished. And so if reelected, I want to continue to do that kind of work um, to advance the organization. Uh, one of the things that I have seen happen since becoming a member of the executive committee is a real concerted effort to engage members of the plenum beyond just the annual meetings. And I've seen real interest in many of the members of the plenary to be a part of those conversations. And those conversations have then informed the way in which we uh, think about and do the work that we do on the executive committee. So um, for me, that would be um, something that I'd be very excited to continue in a second term on the executive committee. Um, I'm also really committed to working with the leadership of the UCEA to grow the organization. I've been very um, excited about the work that happens in some of the other uh, parts of the organization, like um, the different task forces and things like that. And then finally, we have been undertaking this, um, our, our recent work with Appreciative Inquiry, and that has, inspired, that has inspired me to think about my own research and, um, and how it applies. But then also I would love the opportunity to continue to, do, to work collaboratively with the leadership of the executive committee um, and the plenary to think about the ways in which we can improve UCEA from an appreciative perspective. You know, ultimately, I just want to continue to, to learn and to grow as a scholar and a leader. And I want to also continue to offer my best effort to make UCEA awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if reelected, you intend to run for president, correct? That's correct. Will you share the reasons why you have chosen to run for president and your vision for the future of UCEA? Sure. 
I would like to run for president um, for a variety of reasons. Primarily, I want to continue to learn and to serve the organization and the field. And I think uh, when I think about leadership, I think about service and I think about the ways in which uh, a leader must serve. And so, um, and also the ways in which a leader must learn. In my role on the executive committee, I believe that I've learned as much as I have contributed and I have grown as a scholar, as a teacher, as a professional, and as a leader. Um, and I have mentioned already our, our commitment to social justice and the ways in which that's personally impacted me and how I've have it has inspired me to reflect on my own thinking and teaching. And as a result, I've been able to incorporate um, these ideas and materials into my classes um, and as a result of engaging with my colleagues on the EC. Uh, as we challenge ourselves and we challenge the members of the larger organization to think and reflect on these ideals. And so that's just one example of, of why uh, I think that uh, it's important to be a part of the EC and why I'd like to, to run for president. Uh, as, it, as it relates to my vision for UCEA, my vision is that UCEA will continue to grow and to attract dynamic, effective scholars and institutions. Uh, we are currently involved in this process of appreciative inquiry as an organization. And we've asked the question about where we see UCEA in the near term and in the future. And my vision is that UCEA will continue to influence leadership practice and leadership policy with respect to developing effective school and district leaders. And my vision is that we will do this by being inclusive of people and ideas, um, that we welcome change as an opportunity, that we inspire rigorous research and that we continue to grow and nurture collegial research, re, I'm sorry, collegial relationships and partnerships in the field, both nationally and internationally. Thank you so much for your time and thoughtful responses, Dr. Peters. This interview will be archived on the UCEA Google Plus page and the UCEA YouTube channel. Listeners can access or share the interview at any time. We also encourage listeners to post comments and questions on this interview in the comments on the UCEA Google Plus page. Please stay tuned for our next UCEA Executive Committee interview with Dr. Muhammad Khalifa today, October 20th, 2015. Goodbye from UVA, Dr. Peters. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you at the convention in San Diego. Likewise. <laughs>